battery. That's the case also. Oh, it's Jeremy! <laughs> What's going on? What's going on? Chance to work with the Definitely do it. They're, they're just a lot of fun. There are some Pinocchios in here as well. Um, down here I do have um, L345, which are the, the Prince the Tiger Pleco. They look really cool. Do they also call it like the Scribble one? But each one's a little different. They, they have a really nice multi pad. We'll be at Cataclysm. I'm one of the guest speakers for Cataclysm this yeah. year. So go to catfish-cataclysm.com. And Where is it at this year? It is in Madison, Wisconsin. What is going on, Shrimp Keepers? So, we're not talking about shrimp today. We are going to talk about something really special. We're going to do a quick video on how to breed zebra plecos. I'm here with Jeremy Bosch. He is like one of the best zebra plecos that zebra pleco breeders that I've ever ran into and he's just breeding an absolute ton of these guys so we're going to show you a tank that he has like 15 babies we're going to show you his breeding pair how he breeds and what size cave we even have a bonus we have Corey from aquarium co-op in the background hanging out with us so it's just going to be a good a good time and uh, so I'm really excited to bring you guys this video so stay tuned and I'll hopefully share with you all the secrets that Jeremy will allow me to share. <laughs> the, the female will go into the cave, the male will basically court the female and then she'll go into the cave and then the male traps her and typically, well, if they're new at it, she may be in there for, for a while, for four or five days or even more. Oh wow. But once so, they, and he traps her in there that whole time. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you're laying these eggs. Or, or you're else. not coming out. Or you're not coming out. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. And he'll literally block the exit uh, from her from her leaving. And it almost becomes more like what you see with sharks and stingrays, where he's kind of like gnawing on the side of her and trying yeah. to keep her in. And she'll leave the cave and she'll have bite marks on her. And um, but once the pair really gets going, like I have a male that is like clockwork. She's in there for a day or two, and then she's out. Gotcha. And there's a clutch of eggs. Wow. Now, what's the deal? So, you have only pretty much one size cave. Have you found that that's the size that works best for zebras? They seem to like these. These are the, they basically are made by hand. Yeah. And the back of it's kind of contoured a little bit. Um, they seem to prefer these, so that's, wow. that's what I go with. And there's varying sizes there, so they can kind of pick which, which they like. What temp do you spawn in? They're about 82. 82 degrees 82 you spawn. 82 degrees, yep. Yeah. And half RO, half tap water. Our tap water here is about 7.2. Gotcha. So that drops it below 7. Um, it's not super acidic, but a little bit soft warm. Okay. Um, and that seems to help in the egg production. And now what's the deal with all the cherry shrimp? So that's just uh, another way of utilizing a tank. Basically maximizing tank space. And they will not mess with the eggs at all? They don't bother the zebras? Uh, I have a friend that, that says that they, they may do that, so I'm keeping an eye on it. If I end up with too many cherry shrimp, I'll, I'll uh, do something about that and intervene. But so far, it hasn't been an issue. They haven't really been bothering the male too much. Nice. Um, I do pull the cave eventually once he has fry, so that yeah. probably helps a little bit too. Um, so like, the process is, the male traps the female in the cave mm -hmm. for like anywhere between a day to five to six days. Mm -hmm. And then after that time, like once you see the female leave and the male sitting on the eggs, yeah. you that instantly you take it out? No, I, I usually let the eggs stay in there for a while so I can see if they're developing. Um, okay. I want to know that they're developing. And the male's gotten used to my flashlight, I think, at this point. So I usually just check once a day just to make sure that they're okay. okay. And the eggs will hatch in about six to seven days. Okay, so maybe like day four, mm -hmm. if, they, if they still look good, you'll take them and put them into a different tank. Yeah, I'll move them to a 10-gallon tank, and then I'll keep monitoring them, making sure that they are, are good, and uh, they eventually hatch, and they'll have their yolk sacs for a good while, uh, about a week or so, and then after that point, they start to develop their coloration, 
and then within a week after that they leave the cave so we're okay. talking a good you know, three weeks of time okay. now do you leave the the male in there with them for a while do you take them out so the fry eventually leave the cave once the fry have all left the cave I will go ahead and remove the male and put them back with the colony um, you can leave them in there for a few days if you'd like just to kind of recuperate because gotcha. he hasn't been eating the whole time for the most part so yeah. he needs time to recover and I think with plecos it's it's actually a good thing to have reverse trios because the males are guarding the eggs and the fry and the female will go to any male that's ready and willing so um, once she's ready to, to spawn she will go to another male and spawn with him mm. well that male may not be ready to spawn again he may be recouping still he may need to put some weight back on after three weeks of watching yeah. the previous clutch so if you have two males and one female the female can go between the two males and it gives time for the males to rest gotcha. very reminiscent of uh, what you'd see with uh, some other species but kind of in reverse like your African cichlids usually you want multiple females with one male but in this case, since the yeah. males are doing all the work, sometimes now, having more of those. How happen. often can the females produce? Every two to four weeks. Two to four weeks. So once they get going, they can really start cooking. That's awesome. Now, do you have juveniles right now? Mm -hmm. Fry? Yep, they're over here. Nice. So the male still has fry. And they're in this cave here. And as soon as we shine the flashlight, he's probably going to... He's probably going to make a, a run for it, so get it while you can. Ready when you are. All right. Any fry? I didn't see it. So this is the tank that you use? So this is the tank where I pull the, pull the mail to. Let's see. The fry will hide everywhere. And how big are they when they're born? Uh, they're about half an well, not quite a half inch, more like three quarters. You okay. can see the fry, but they definitely were in here before. They might still be in there. They still may be at the back of the cave since it's daytime. That yeah, oh yep, I see one. Oh, you see him? Yeah. Let's see if I can get in there. There's one all the way at the back. Oh, I see him. Yep. Saw two. Yeah, there's at least two back there. Oh, that's cool. So that sometimes so pretty is, much, Yeah, they don't even look like they have an egg sac yet. Yeah, they've pretty much absorbed. So they're almost ready to come out of the cave at this point. So about a week ago, they had their yolk sac. And you'll probably get, what, four to six per clutch or maybe more? I actually am getting a little bit more than that. I've wow. been getting anywhere from eight to Sorry. a dozen. Anywhere between... My, eight I just heard eight to a thousand. A dozen. <laughs> I'm like, me. A dozen. I That's wish. Awesome. I wish. Yeah. You have to go to. Uh, a thousand would be crazy. You have to go to Jim uh, uh, Kitchen's uh, place to see a thousand Pseudocanthicus Holy fry. Holy smokes. He has yeah. that many. Yeah. They, they have large clutches, usually a few hundred to a thousand. So. Wow. What your zebras, at what age are you seeing these guys getting reproductive? They do take a while. Um, they need to be about two and a half, three inches before they're large enough, and they're at that point about two and a half years old. Yeah. I mean, these guys are uh, kind of special, and what's nice about this is if you let nature take its course, the male's going to do all the work for you. Yes. Um, and so that really makes things easier for yeah. us. You know, the, the Laura carrots where there's no less parental care, I think down the line you're going to see that those are going to be harder to come by, harder to raise uh, yeah. than, than plecos. Plecos, for the most part, once they reach an age, a certain age, given the right conditions, the right food, they kind of just do what naturally comes to them. We'll provide them kitties and they'll we'll start reproducing. Um, zebras were actually the first pleco I spawned. And really? It's, uh, it's been over 15 years ago. <laughs> you did it backwards. I did do it backwards. I was working at a fish store and I really liked the fish. And uh, at that time they were not on the banned list. It was actually yeah. a year prior to them being banned. And um, I said to the manager, I'm like, can you get zebra plecos for me? He's like, yeah, sure, absolutely. So. I paid $40 for um, uh, for four zebra plecos. Wow. And now now they're ridiculous. Now they're now they're reproducing. Unless you have a good friend. Like if you have a good friend to get them off of then whew, cheap. 
<laughs> not that cheap. No, no, not that cheap. Do you have any be able to acquire these birds? I'm not going to be able to make you it this year to that. I'm actually going to be in Uruguay. Um, okay. So I need to save up time for, for sure. Uruguay. But, but yeah, you can see there's a whole bunch of fry in here. There's, there's over Two, a dozen. 14, that's, that's 10, 12, 14, Very six. Nice. I count 15, I think. Wow. Uh, I didn't even know I had that many in there. That's awesome. <laughs> oh, man. And I'm sure there's more. Like, there's more hiding places. Yeah, there's there's probably more than this. This no. is the gathering spot, though, as you can see. Now, yeah. for something like this, what would this generally go for? Uh, selling device? Uh, so these guys go for about $125 a piece. Okay. Um, I don't like to sell them quite at this size. They're sure. still a little young yet. Mm -hmm. I like to get them another quarter, half inch in size. Okay. And then, uh, then let them go. But very if they're nice. local, it's not a big deal because they will, uh, they'll take to the tap water very easily. Sure. Um, really, it's only for spawning purposes that these guys need a little bit softer water. And uh, Well, when I'm ready down the road, then I know. Oh, yeah. You know where to go? Give me an excuse to come back. Yeah. But Jeremy, how about this? Um, I see like leaves in this tank. What type of leaves are you using to feed these guys? So I use oak leaves. And I use oak leaves because, well, they're free. Yeah, that's always to, a positive. Just have to make sure that they're coming from a reliable source. You don't want to have a, go to like the golf field and golf course and pick up leaves from there because there's a lot of fertilizers that they put mm. down on the greens. Yeah. But if you go to like your, if you have an oak tree in your yard, you can certainly use that if you've not been fertilizing, um, or if you have like a natural area that you can go to, um, you can collect oak leaves. Perfect. And it works really well. I collect once a year, and then you have enough for the entire year. Just keep them. I have a one of those uh, what you call it, brown paper bags that they use for yard waste. Just I put just a bunch them, in there. Just put a bunch in there and just keep them. Yeah. Do when they dry, they kind of smell good, do too. Do you find the reliability <laughs> versus, like, your common, like, the top of Indian almond? Do you notice any differences at all? Uh, they Cheaper. don't release as many tannins. Sure. Um, but, I mean, because they're free, you just use more of them. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then the plecos will eat away, and you can see that these guys have pretty much completely eaten all the the leaves and all you have left are some of these twigs which are fine to use too. This is what you end up with and that's basically leaf mall. Are there and zebras in there as well? These are 333's so these are the yellow king tigers from Puerto de Maz which is a location in uh, Brazil. Yep, they will uh, they will eat driftwood as well. You can see there's a whole bunch here. How about the zebras? They eat on the driftwood? Well, it's more the uh, the detritus or the offwax that they're that they're eating. Offwax is basically detritus and, and the growth that you get on on uh, surfaces, which includes you know biofilm, um, algae, yeah. microorganisms that the fish feed on, and so a lot of the plecos will utilize that. Certain species use it more than others. Your your panache, your panaculus, uh, your wood eaters tend to use it more. Than others, but all the plecos will do that to some degree. A little bit of recap, like if you could give, like maybe one or two pieces of advice for someone that's like really want to get in zebras. What would be those two things that like this is like the main thing that you need to do, or you're not going to be successful? Well, the very first thing is that you need to have patience. Yep. Uh, if you're working with zebras, they're not going to spawn within the first year that you get them. That's just it, just how the fish is. They need to be about two and a half, three years before they really start reproducing. So the number one thing is to have patience. Uh, the second thing I will say is just make sure that you're, you're staying up on your water changes and your feedings. Um, that, that's really crucial in the development of any, any fish, including zebras. So make sure you do you know, weekly water changes if possible, worst case every other week, um, and then daily feedings. Um, yeah. Make sure you feed meaty foods, uh, quality foods. Yeah. We didn't even really get into that. What uh, what are some foods that you recommend for a zebra keeper? So for juveniles, they'll take the baby brine right away. You can feed rapashi gel foods, uh, flake foods. Um, once they get a little bit of size on them, you can transition them to uh, foods like brine shrimp, bloodworms, mysis. I do a combination of that for my adults. 
Nice. Um, so a mixture of meaty foods is really crucial for them. Okay. And you do you just do straight tap water too? I do straight tap water for the juveniles. The adults do get a 50-50 mix though. The adults get a 50% mix of RO to tap water okay. to, to get them to reproduce. Uh, it helps with the egg development and I get better hatch rates that way. So uh, if you're looking to spawn them, I would recommend using a little bit of RO uh, for the adults. And I, I didn't ask this either. When you hatch them out in the 10 gallon tank or the tank that you pull them out of, yeah. um, is that tank water or is that its own separate tank? So it actually is tank water. So I pull water from the existing aquarium and move it over. So it's going to be similar in um, pH, hardness, temperature, awesome. all those values. So that is important. You don't want to shock the fry too much. Yeah. Um, or even the or even the parent fish, the, the male, yeah. because you could turn around and eat the eggs of the fry if he's too be terrible. too stressed. So, so. you got to cherish every spawn. Yes, yes. <laughs> every I still every every time they spawn, it's like it's like oh yeah, it's like yes. oh my gosh, you know I don't even care. You know they're they're worth a lot of money, but it's just cool to see the fry. Yeah. You know, this is just a fish before the band was in place that I really fell in love with. So it's just great to see fry every time. Um, I, I enjoy that still to this day, so that's awesome. They're a blast. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much again, and sure. really do appreciate it. No problem.